Okay, Dale, you are live on Facebook. Loves her girlfriend that loves to drink wine and relax. <laughs> Water is behind you. The drinking water. Yeah, right. Actually, the drinking water is going to be right. There you go, by the tree. What's that? Don't forget to talk to your Facebook live friends. Morning. Nice try, Sue.
Hi, Christine. Kristen. Kristen. Kristen.
concentrating mainly on the tree here. Okay. So I'm blocking it in, so you're always going from background to foreground, mm -hmm. large to small, light to dark, okay. and intense to gray. Yes. I love that first green you started with. That's such a lovely soft color. Do you know what that was, the first green? Um, that was the sap green. I'm using sap green, olive green. One has a little bit more blue in it. One has a little bit more yellow in it. Oh, So okay. the sap green has a little bit more blue. Gotcha. And uh, the olive green has a little bit more yellow. Plus I have an azo yellow medium here. They're which really is... lovely thinned out like that. The green thing is, I think it's the biggest challenge. All you need to do is find my, oh, there they are. Um, Usually, I'm not paying too much attention to the background because my concentration's on the tree. But I want to get uh, the whole thing going at once. This oh, is the this is the. I've sap never green. seen anybody do that. It's really fun to see. Oh, hi, Barbara. Hi. I'm trying to make it a little bit more fun, a little bit more impressionistic. Sure. Uh, And I can concentrate on the tree a little bit and then go back to the background. I also have an oil painting brush that I use for pulling up an old oil painting brush. Yes. For lifting. Interesting. You can lift with any of the brushes, but that one you can actually pretty much lift uh, down to pretty light. You'll never get back to white paper. Uh-huh. And I'm not concerned about the darks of the tree because that's going to be covered up. I want to see what I can mm -hmm. get, get behind there. Mm -hmm. I want that to recede a little bit, so I'm going to add a little bit more blue to it. So the amount of water that you're adding or not adding either makes the color more intense or less intense because water is your white right. and the white of the paper, of course. Yeah. Oh, that's a good way to think about it. It's something that um, I started off as an oil painter okay. and I ended up with watercolor for really two reasons. Uh, one is I was going in illustration and mm -hmm. you had to deliver things the next day, which mm -hmm. Oils are never going to be dry. Yep. And uh, second is that I have no sense of smell, um, which I had lost uh, during brain surgery. I went in, I was 80% blind. Oh my goodness. And I had brain surgery, nine hour surgery. Yikes. And this is why I went into art. Well, it looks to me like it was a really good choice for you. I was a plumber at the time. Oh my goodness. Well, isn't this a more fun life? Oh yeah. <laughs> that it is. I'm try to ground this out a little bit. But everything is very, very soft. You try to keep your edges as soft as possible for as long as possible. Mm -hmm. I'll spray just a little bit more water on there. And that, that gives the addition of, you could do that when it's wet or dry, you can lift using the spray, which yeah. is water. So that helped give you a little more of this texture. Yes, texture. and then that gives you the kind of the random texture that you're looking for mm -hmm. because people don't put things down random, they are always trying to put down things equally. Yes. And I was as guilty of that in, in college as I possibly could be. <laughs> um, we always like things even. You know, I'm always telling the students, uh, the f first thing is a drawing. you got to get the drawing right, yes. and then you have to understand the value, and then color. Right. And I says, we spend so much time on the drawing, now you're going to get rid of all the outlines. Yeah. you got to put value against value to create your edge. And I says, you cannot care about your outlines at that point. That's a guide, but it has to be right. 
and they would always sit there and, and try to keep that outline. It's, just, it's not a cartoon. It's not a, a crayon drawing book. You know, you gotta get rid I've, of it. I've often wondered those years that we we were college age, and we see the saw the world in much more stark terms. I think than as we matured and saw more gray areas about everything. Yeah. I wonder if that's somewhat reflected in the artworks that we were trying to make then. We're very, you know, have these really specific things going on. Well, it's you, hard to let go of that. To, you have to be trained with structure and discipline. Yeah. You have to be trained of what you can see, what is real. Then the hardest thing to do is to abstract something. Right. And you have people teaching abstract right off the bat, and I says you can't do that. A good abstract has all the qualities of what you're seeing realistically. I think an abstract is sort of the product of the wisdom of the ages, you know, all the years and being able to sort of step Sim away. It's hard to simplify. Yeah. It's very hard to simplify. Yeah. And you have more, uh, the more college practice. professors teaching from here up instead mm -hmm. of from the bottom mm -hmm. up, and you can't do that. Boy, that was true in my oil painting class in college. I thought I couldn't paint at all because there was no instruction. They set a still life and walked and left the room. I taught, yeah, I, I taught a... Of course, a, I was horrible because yeah, I'd never done it before. I taught at college level for 22 years. Did you? It was oh. a academy, a true academy, where you started oh. at the bottom and you worked up. It was American Academy of Art in Chicago. Oh, yeah. Which is no longer owned by the same people mm. and no longer directed by the same person. Mm. And it, it uh, went in a different direction that was not positive to what I was thinking. So I'm only teaching four different places. Yeah. Good for you. That's great. I was curious. I've, I've never, you know, I've heard about the, tooth, the toothbrush thing, but I've never seen anyone do it. You, did you just dip that in the really wet paint? No, I, I went right to here. Oh, you went? Oh, I, then okay. Then I went to here. Then I go That's how here. you got that you can see variation of... Variation yeah. of, okay. of the watercolor. Okay. Um, and you can do it up to a certain point. Then you might... If you go in too late before it's dry, you'll get striations, which sure. are those blooms that we don't like or feathered edges. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. they can be used. I'm not going to say they're not 100% bad, yeah, well, I agree. but you have to be careful. Try not to get too many of those. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so in, <laughs> in, in watercolor, timing is everything. The pigment dries quite a bit lighter, which can't be taught. It has to be experienced. Yes. And I did probably around 500 paintings before I got yeah, one. Yeah, be careful with the chairs. Mm -hmm. I did one a gentleman. larger That's size than this and the two small <laughs> ones every day. Um, no, I actually went through yeah, about 500 paintings. Not big so, ones, but half mm -hmm. sheets and then quarter sheets. And, when you go mm -hmm. to get out, and they all went to the landfill. There's something out there with my name on it someplace. Mm -hmm. But I keep on telling the students, you can only compare yourself to yourself, but watch what other people are doing. Because you learn from the students, you learn from the lectures, you learn from the, the uh, teacher. But it says, you've got to keep on going forward and learn by the mistakes. Don't get upset. By it. That's the best learning tool you can have. Yeah, permission to just play. It's really, you know, play and learn is really, it's a hard thing for us adults, but it really is the key, I think. Yes, it is. Because yeah. I've seen what other colleges do where the professor walks out. And you have an adjunct professor walk in that's really just a student that is upper level student. They don't know everything. They haven't had the years of experience and they really should not be directing the class. But the professor gets paid big money for setting up the store life and walking out. And it just it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. It didn't work in my case. No. It, but it, you know what? It turned me into really a painter. It's really cheating the student. It turned me into a painter because it bothered me for decades at, that I thought I couldn't paint. So eventually I said, okay, I have time to tackle this now. Anybody, Guess what? <laughs> anybody can paint if they have the desire and time to practice. Completely. It's like music yeah. or dance it's or like whatever. Practice. It takes practice. You've got to practice constantly. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anybody just flow off the fingertips. And anybody should be improving no matter what level you're on. Yeah, that, it makes it a wonderful lifelong pursuit. Yeah, and you never do it. Yeah. You're always trying to advance yourself. Exactly. I paint much differently than I did five years ago, ten years ago, because mm -hmm. you go in different directions and you try to experience different things. 
and it's difficult for students to understand that you don't get there in a year or two or three or ten. You get where you want to go through really? your life. I think the, it's a journey. The right approach is to be the best painter you can be. At, at that time today. Exactly. And tomorrow, hopefully, it'll be better. And we have our ups and downs mm -hmm. and disappointments, but I said that's the name of the game. They have to understand that. Now, when I look at your page, the areas that are left white feel somewhat random, although I suspect you have a plan. Um, yeah, there's the plan in here with a little bit of light with coming light. through. Mm -hmm. And when I put the other color over it, it'll be more pure, more intense. It'll be lighter. Um, sometimes I do use gouache. Okay. But that is planned from the beginning. Sometimes I will use um, a liquid masquerade. Mm -hmm. That's planned from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And usually it's on small areas mm -hmm. that when you're doing big brush strokes, it doesn't Hard interrupt enough. and have yeah. to go around. Yeah. So you do that for smaller areas. Right. Um, I'm not a big fan of it yeah. myself. Yeah. I've seen other people use it effectively and other people use it terribly. Mm -hmm. um, I bought some and I still haven't opened the bottle. <laughs> I, I buy a bottle about <laughs> once every 10 years. By the time okay. I finish it, it's a rubber ball. So I have to buy a new bottle. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, there was one lady watercolorist, uh, Nita Ingalls, yes. who uses it extensively uh -huh. in the first part of her career. And she was probably one of the only ones that used it effectively that I've seen. Mm -hmm. But you can put it on after the first wash, before the first wash. Sure. You can put oh, yeah. it on anywhere you want right. that you want to retain. But it's, it is a extremely well thought out process before you pick up the brush. It's all right. See. Don't you just love cell phones? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> what happened to the dime and a quarter we used to carry? Hello? Yeah. Oh, hi. Are you still in the Chicago area? Yes. Yeah. Out oh. south of Chicago in Indiana. Uh, Just the region? <laughs> yeah, the re the Rust Belt. <laughs> or what used to be the Rust Belt. The region. Say hi to Don Skimmer and Brian Hall, they're watching. Hi hello, Don. Hi Brian. Brian. I'll send you the bill for watching this later. <laughs> We're going to take a break here, let this dry, and I'll come back. i got to get up and stretch once in a while. There's a long <laughs> ride down. <laughs> it starts raining on the way down, too. Rain. Oh, I love rain. Not out here. <laughs> it's dry all the way down. It's, it, you could dig down three feet and still get dust. Usually she does that on flat ground. Yeah, 40, 40 hours. Should be good. Going uphill or downhill, she's never had a problem. Obviously, this is something new. <laughs> She broke her, her ankle oh one time. On flat ground. Oh. She broke her fifth metatarsal on flat ground.
take the zipper on them the way around it. Mine. Yeah, yeah. I don't think this one. Why don't you just flip it the other way? Let me do this. That one. And lay them like this. Mm -hmm. No, the wind is blowing. Why don't you just hold them and I'll photograph them in your lap? Look at Stanley's easel. There's the well, I'm after the picture, not, I'm not, whoa, I'm, uh, mm. the weather's really nice as I stick my foot in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, won't you just hold them so I can quickly take them? And we'll, do, we'll go through them. I hold got them more straight so we don't get the reflection. Or okay. We'll just live with what we get because we're going to get reflection. We're just going to have reflection. That's I don't I don't want you to take them out. It's too dirty. There's a house in Galena up on the hill, oh, that's and uh, yeah. that's what to do this one. Okay. Yeah, it's in the downtown area. That was is what you're representing. Oh, how wonderful! Well, that's not your fault. We've got a lot of reflection. Now, that's the first one with no reflection. Yay! Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Try those others like that. See if we can. I know I'm being bossy. Yeah. That's right. i got to wait for this to dry. Oh, okay. I mean, not really. Oh, that's grand. Galena, where? Illinois. That's what I wonder. Just beautiful. Disgustingly Hi, beautiful, beautiful, aren't they? Yeah. They're all for sale. <laughs> These are all blue shade Do you mind pens. if I look? Oh, help me. They're all museum quality. Blue shade. Yeah, those are much better. Thank you for You're redoing welcome. that. Appreciate it. That's what I like in watercolor. That's what I do. We all try to manifest it every time we start. <laughs> Is there an outlet around here for a air dryer in the tree or something? I didn't bring one. Though. Yeah, we're getting there. It's it's dry. I always feel it with the back of my hand, so you don't get any oil on it. You're at the cold. It's a little Yeah, it's a little cold, but you can. You can see and that the paper is a little bouncy, so it's still ripple. Because I'm using 300 Kilimanjaro, uh, which is I know you can get it treacherous. Joe's, I believe, North Carolina. Um, it's a good quality paper. It's as good as Arches, um, but it has to be cotton, 100% cotton. If you have a if you have a cheaper paper, it has wood in it and it pills. And it's nothing but aggravation. I figured out right away to use higher quality paper. Yeah. Um, so I use Arches Kilimanjaro. Thank you. Uh, and uh, sometimes Fabriano. Uh -huh. And um, I've used watercolor board, but I'm not really particularly happy with it. Uh -huh. It doesn't have the same uh -huh. floating no. uh, power. I can't uh -huh. see. I okay. see. And um, do you usually work in this? I see you have that size format pretty consistently. I went to that format because of the recession we went through. Yeah. Nobody was buying larger paintings. Oh, sure. Yeah. That was the number one reason. Um, I just got done with a full sheet of watercolor paper. Um, for this young lady over here, she commissioned me. Mm -hmm. Let me have my phone, please. And. Uh, she threw me a curved ball because I haven't done children mm -hmm. since I painted her portrait when she was about four. Um, and I sat there and actually looked at it for a while. Why are we albums? I remember you're still on Facebook Live. Yeah.
Oh, isn't that it's, a it's lovely a painting? That I put. Oh, this isn't the finished one, unfortunately. But I have butterflies Aww. around. And I have white flowers down here. It helps balance off some of the light. Sure. Sure. Lovely. But you took that down in Florida. Yeah. yeah. Share it with this lady, too. Mm -hmm. might want to share it on your Facebook audience, Yeah. Too. Well, they've seen it on Facebook. They've seen it on Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> of course I have. <laughs> the final is on Facebook. What a wonderful thing to have. But I took out a chair that was over here. I added more palms up there, mm -hmm. added white flowers down here. And they had kind of a, I don't know what kind of patio it was, but I enhanced it a little bit in some spots, as you can see down here. And then over here, I just let it fall off. Mm -hmm. okay, I think we can get back to the painting part. Oh my goodness, red tail hawk. Oh, he's perched in that tree right behind you. Yeah. Right over your head. Mm -hmm. Right on that big branch there. Yep. <laughs> That's a brave hawk. Being here with this, all these folks around. Yeah, really. I just won't hurt him. <laughs> Smart bird. <laughs> so is this step two? This is step two. I'll keep on dropping stuff. It'll be step three. What is the base of the, uh, it looks like masonite you've got your paper tape so to, is that correct? Yeah, it, it is masonite. And then um, what's the trough at the bottom that's catching all the water? Is it just actually, he has this right here? So oh, is that what you're using that yeah, catches the water? This, this I use um, on travel, I could take this out oh, okay. and this utilize this. Okay. I cover this with paper towels so that it doesn't leak, Yeah. but it's pretty good. Awesome. So now I'm putting so in the leaves here. We, we went to a guy in Michigan City. Dry brushing them in. were off. And I have had to deal with a lot of trains because I'm an art right. director. Right. So I was, I was like, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. Ricardo didn't like seeing us come back in because no. he knew we were crazy. Yeah. Well, it's good you found a good resource. Oh, yeah, they are. And they're so nice. And they're right across from this wonderful Italian bakery. Uh-huh. <laughs> Fun to go. <laughs> yeah. Huh? And then he teaches in Elmhurst at the Elmhurst Art Museum. Oh, yeah. So it's easy for him to drop Excellent. Out. Excellent. In fact, he's got Tuesday his Elmhurst class is kicking off again. They took a summer hiatus. So where are you located? In Highland, Indiana. South of Hammond, and we're west of Gary. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. Got it. And about 35 minutes from the loop. You know, we haven't been downtown a lot lately. It's getting so expensive for mm. cars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, downtown is like a special treat. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, he teaches there on Thursdays. So when it gets chilly out, I get to ride with him. Go to the Apple Store, go shopping, have a nice lunch. Yeah, and then back to the Palin Tuesday. Sure. Yeah. And then once in a while I have a client. See, but everything's now over the internet and emails and so what are you using to spray that with my toothbrush i think my yeah. toothbrush <laughs> i want to get a little bit more of a random pattern up here toothbrush. before i start on the actual tree itself signify some of the leaves down in here just to give some of that laziness here. As soon as I get the large areas done we then go to a smaller area which is the actual tree. So I'm always telling the students to work from large to small and not work little areas first.
Okay. Mind if I take a picture? Go ahead. Of course. And Facebook yeah. Live is working, so. It all will start coming together as soon as I start working on the tree itself. Just a few more things I've got to add to this. Now while it's still wet in some of these areas, I'll let the darker values bleed in to the lighter one so that it stays a little bit on the softer side. Now pronounce them later. Now one of the things that I'm always telling the students, tree trunks are not gray, they're not brown, <laughs> they're every color that surrounds it, and you can put hints of that in, but don't, don't go crazy. You can also use the toothbrush for painting occasionally. If it works, you're a hero. If it isn't, you do it over. Have you ever used salt? I have uh, in the past. I haven't used it probably in 15 years. Um, I haven't read anything bad or positive on long-term effects of the salt, um, but I'm not, I don't like the residue left over. Right. I'm not thrilled with it for the most part, uh, so I really kind of ignore the fact that I used to use salt, and it's hard to get rid of it sometimes. So I used, I'll show you, I'll use the uh, spray bottle. As time goes along here. Now I'm going to start putting in the tree here. And I'm trying to remember what light was showing. Um, what light I, I want to change a little bit perhaps. Up here in the main part of the trunk, I'm going to darken up a little bit because the tree overall is darker than the leaves around it for the most part. You want to sign up for that? Is it, it's over in the back, and here's the pen, and there's some something over there. That's got somebody's name on it. That's mine. That is, okay. Yeah, just throw it in the back if you will. And there's stamp things in there somewhere. Right here? Yeah. And this is the first part of the wash that I'm putting the tree in, the actual trunk itself. And just put it in here? Yeah. Okay. And this will give the basis for the rest of the tree. Then you can start actually building up from that point. One of the main things you have to remember is not to over mix your paints. I'm going in and out of the leaves at the same time, trying to show them uh, a little bit more. 
carefully. Oh no. It is most most of the time it is a hard medium, but I've seen some people adapt to it like ducks in a water. It's um, something quite fascinating. And it's so fun. There's so many different things you can do with it. Yes. I love it. There's actually um, some paintbrushes on the table. Right there. Where's paintbrushes? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Watercolor brushes. Water. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I have an oil painter. Uh, yeah. Well, I've got see. more than I can count already. <laughs> Any glitter and stuff. I use Most five, I use five brushes and I have 40. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, Sounds in like our me. Backyard is, uh, royal brushes in Munster, Indiana. And they're very generous. They're really a big supporter of the arts. And so really? Go over there and say, can we give some away? I mean, I've had my disaster. Don't get me wrong. Oh, we all have. But I just absolutely love it. I'm in love with it. I don't think there's an artist that hasn't had a disaster. Oh, yeah. There's been some bad ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Overworking. Just, oh. <laughs> you got to know when to stop. You yeah. Know, you can't have that flask of whiskey with you when you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Although I, I do serve wine in my studio yep. sometimes. Now at this particular point, I'm going to pay attention more to the light of what's hitting where. And I'm going to softly take it out because the light that's showing on the tree is kind of a doppled light. Kind of brands of paint that you use at one point? Um, I, use, I use several different brands. I use Holbein, Windsor Newton, and I use um, um, a Dutch brand called uh, Van Gogh. And Van Gogh is a cheaper brand since I demonstrate so much. Um, I use that a little bit more often, but because uh, it's about $485 a tube where the other stuff is $5 and up. Uh, and you always have to be kind of careful of what your budget is as an artist. Something happening back there? Oh, just your roll. Things are lost. You mentioned Windsor Newton, and there was another one you rattled off real fast. Uh, Holbein. Holbein? Yes. It's a very, very good name brand. Mentioned four or five brushes. Um, <laughs> yeah, the one brushes, the brushes I'm using, I'm gonna have to leave this set just a minute. Um, I use a one inch ox hair flat, which was by Marilla, it was a 202. I don't think they make the same one. This is 40 years old. Yeah. That's um, another nice thing about watercolors, the brushes last. Yeah, yeah. all real oh, hair, nice. never, never um, synthetic hair. I always tell the students, don't get synthetic hair, it oh. doesn't load. In other words, the water doesn't drop into the brush because oh, it's, an, it's an oil product. Okay. Except it has a water binder. Synthetics are Synthetics oil. are made from oil byproducts. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. okay. So the next best thing, they make a synthetic real hair blend if they can afford that. Okay. But I, I don't like to... Um, have the students spend a lot of money at the beginning. 
but they have to have some decent brushes, good paint, and good paper. Yeah. You don't have to have that many brushes to start. No. It's amazing. I, I tell the students, you need your one inch flat, you need a number nine or ten round brush, mm -hmm. uh, which I've been using lately. Uh, I've been using the bamboo china um, calligraphy brushes. Yeah. Inexpensive, real hair, great brush. Yeah. I have a number four, or, or this is number seven or eight round, and I also have a um, number four round. These are art sign brushes. Um, seven, eight, eight, and four? Yes, seven or eight or and a four. Mm -hmm. And I have an old oil painting brush for lifting. Mm -hmm. I have uh, my wife's toothbrush that I put back every night after I clean it. <laughs> it's a cheap toothbrush. Go to the dollar store, flat, medium, or soft, mm -hmm. and you can do all sorts of things. Now, if I took water at this point, you can see what happens to the mm -hmm. tree here. Mm -hmm. It gets some texture. If I do the same thing up into the branches up here you see it mostly on darker colors but you can hit it with water and get that similar effect that you do with salt without putting salt on your paper nice. okay yeah. and it's it's yeah. only a too. it's a choice that every artist makes whether they want to put salt on their paper or they don't want to put salt on their paper and i always find that the less you add the better off you are oh Keep this guy a safe home. <laughs> Put him on the branch. Um, but you're starting to see the tree develop at this point. Um, I. <laughs> a caterpillar. <laughs> um, one of the things I'm always telling the students: the blocking is very quick. You're trying to cover all the paper. You're trying to get all the masses set. Leave it dry. And I tell them: sit on your hands. Don't touch it. And every, while they're mixing paint, three or four swishes through the paint when you're mixing paint. So when you put down the, the pigment, you're getting several different colors happening at once. It's one of the beauties of watercolor. I've seen students where they're like a mix master over here. Mm -hmm. They get one color, they put down one color. You can see that I put down several colors within a brush stroke. Yeah, this is beautifully and, tonal and it's approach. And you get more variety that way. Yeah. So I always tell them, don't overmix your color here. A couple swipes through it and then continue. Um, That's a really good thing to know. You don't need to um, paint. I have students that are doing this. They're trying to flatten it out. You're not a wall painter or a house painter. Put it down, let it flow, let it creep, let it do what it's supposed to do. I like how vertical your, your mount is too. That really um, I didn't work, I worked move. more dry on uh, wet on dry paper I did hit it up here with the spray sometimes depending on what I'm painting I'll start off flat looking down at mm -hmm. it but you should always be looking directly at it but I'll be up above it looking down and I'll water down the whole paper to get a different effect so that's wet into wet mm -hmm. this was wet into semi dry okay. because I did spritz the paper with with the watercolor first do you coat it first with anything? No. No, I don't wash it down or hit it with clear water and a clean sponge. Sometimes my instructor, who I was taught by, Irving Shapiro, used to take and wipe down the paper with cold water and a clean sponge to take off some of the sizing. Mm. I like it to where the, the pigment floats longer on the paper. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the first thing that you've seen in knitting? Could be. I don't recall. Could be. Irving Shapiro died in 1994. He was my okay. my director and man who hired me. He was director president of the school. He was the youngest member of the uh, United American Watercolor Society. American Watercolor Society. And um, was that at the the American Academy of Art? Okay. We'll I have to ask Sandy that. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, I think so too. Like I said, the school has and changed directions. And the time directions is the and time is right too. Sandy is Sandy's in her 70s, so that could well have been. I'm only in my 20s. I know. And what planet? This one, in my world. <laughs> I know. How many colors That's of a green good thing. you used? I've got two greens on here. I've got sap green, which has more blue. I have olive green, which has more yellow. 
That was and, my very first question. And I have You're cobalt so blue. I have old, ultramarine blue. Now, cobalt yeah. blue is my cooler blue. Right. Ultramarine blue is my warmer blue. Yeah. They're both cool colors. Then I have two convenient colors on here, uh, raw sienna and burnt sienna. Uh-huh. So I'm really only using um, seven colors. So are you saying you could mix to the raw and burnt sienna, calling them convenience colors? You can mix them up, yes. Really? This is a grayed down yellow that's warm. Okay. This is a grayed down red orange, which is warm. Okay, good to know that. So you can physically mix it up, but once you put it on there, it's convenient to use it. Right, right. So I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to... What I do when I dry brush, sometimes I'll take the brush and tap it off on the mm -hmm. paper towel, and I will dry brush in... I love the variety of marks you can get with that calligraphy brush. It's really interesting. I started using it, like I said, two years ago, and it's it's really a nice uh, brush because it, it flops around. It gives you the random paint marks that one desires in a painting. Yeah, and yet at and that size, a smaller scale. I have a bigger one, too, that yeah. I use occasionally for bigger paintings. Um, but I was a devout i had a number 12 round yeah. series 133 this, this is what I, like my favorite brush right now yeah. at, at the stage i'm at and i've kind of changed a little bit and i found a lot of these brushes with my father's belongings after he passed in the garage i found a bundle of the art sign brushes Ooh. he was a um color etcher okay mm. for color plates and so forth and he was in the lithographer's union, uh -huh. and he did that for 40 years or so, yeah. with a small interruption with World War II wow. that a lot of men went to. And, uh, but he had got me art sign brushes uh, in a place, I think it was Melrose Park outside of Chicago, where they ordered their supplies. Your father was married? Um, in a roundabout way, yeah, I would say he was. He did uh, four color plates where he etched them with acid, and this is what he used to use for putting the acid across the plate to open up the little dots. He was a dot engraver mm -hmm. to receive more ink or less ink. Now, as I'm always telling the students, when you are painting, especially from a photograph, you're interpreting the subject matter. You're not copying the photograph. And I have sometimes one heck of a time trying to make them understand that it's more important what you leave out than what you put in. Mm -hmm. Simplify, adjust whenever you can. Don't copy the photograph. Because people think, well, it's nature and it's perfect. Well, no, it's not. You may not need a few trees. You may want to lighten a few values, darken a few values whatever the case may be, but you don't want to copy what's there. Especially if somebody put up a chain link fence. <laughs> One of my pet peeves. Now, I'm not doing a whole lot to the background because that's not what I really wanted to paint. I wanted to start getting into the tree so let's go into the tree at this point Have any questions? Please ask. Simple 
question. What kind of tape are you using? A release? Um, mm, I'm okay. using regular masking tape. Oh, really? Um, in fact, I just went to a hardware store the other day to get some. Um, if you don't leave it on there for an extended time, more than a week, you should be fine. Oh, that's nice to know. Yeah. Um, that extends the budget a Don't bit. ever use color tape, like you see people using blue tape. Oh, yeah. That throws your color off. You can't judge color oh, as well. Oh, what a good tip. I Keep found it some neutral. white 3M easy release. White's, white's fine. Um, but it's expensive. It depends on what. Like $5 a roll. Yeah. Yeah. I go to a place called Harbor Freight. Um, and I buy my tape. I buy two inch and three, one inch. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's fairly inexpensive. But I don't um, think that you need to buy expensive tape. Mm -hmm. And what weight uh, paper are you using? 300 pounds. That's all I really uh, use. There is a lighter weight paper that I use once in a while. Um, my wife bought it for me. We were on our way home from the north woods of Wisconsin, and she saw this tape, or I mean, not tape, paper called Indigo. It's handmade, or the feeling of handmade. Um, yeah, it's from Canada, and um, she ordered me a packet of it, and it's very soft, and I found out, it's a mistake, you can't lift anything with the oil brush. It's a very, very soft paper. If you over lift, uh, it will uh, go through the paper, but it has very vivid color on it that is very, very nice. Now you can see I'm slowing down the process at this point. And I, I again, I'm looking at, I've lost my light now, so I'm going to really play games with it. Um, here it comes. Now it's back. So what I'm going to do is I wet the brush, the one inch brush, and I'm going to lift out. You could do this when it's wet, semi-wet or dry. And I'm going to pull out a branch there and then I'm going to add the dark part of the branch back in here. This is where you begin to redefine certain things. find the edge of that branch a little bit more by putting dark behind it. I want this one branch to go off into the background, so I'm going to make a darker statement out front because that dark will push that other branch back that's a little bit less dark. Now if you go to his YouTube channel, he just published a video on painting trees. I'll look it up. It's about... I watch all of them, so... <laughs> it's about a half hour long. Okay. Uh, it's a very simple rendition. That's how I've uh, um, honed in on my skills as a YouTube video. So. They do help. Um, yeah, they help. I, I do my, my uh, classes as 
somewhat of a paint along in many cases. Oh, now that would be fun because um, I love doing the YouTube that paint along. And well, that's how his online classes are too. Okay. Yeah. You mentioned that uh, a couple of the criteria that you encourage is uh, interpretation, uh, and then you said uh, more important to what you leave out than what you put in. Yeah. Is there a third um, thing that you usually say? Well, you have to sometimes reposition things. Um, and you have to be able to draw fairly well. Um, but repositioning, let's say, the, um, the building a little bit or taking out a couple of windows that you don't need. Um, it's a matter of squinting down, taking a look as you're subject matter a little bit too busy. Um, it really depends on what your taste is. Now, a lot of people do a lot of city scenes. I've done those before and I really don't love them that much unless you have that old European look to it. The new, the new city stuff doesn't really thrill me all that much. Simple rules for composition, and how do you start? Well, do you start with any kind of? Never divide your <laughs> composition in half this way, this way, or this way, with any major thing. So that's why I shove the tree off to the to the left. Um, the other thing is that you want, for good composition, you have to have three main large masses, and. Odd numbers are better than even numbers all the time. So when you have trees and so forth, um, they may have all started growing at the same time. They, they grow at different rates because uh, some seeds are better than others. But if they're all the same thickness, change the thicknesses. Move them apart so that the negative space in between the trees or the branches are not the same. Um, try to create unequal spaces a little bit more to help balance some things off because you don't want to have things that are too close or too far apart. You want them to be able to have some sort of semblance of variety in what you're doing because otherwise the viewer is going to be unentertained and you're the entertainer. So in other words, I'm being very careful with this branch so that this doesn't lead the eye out. Because we read from left mm -hmm. to right. Mm -hmm. You can lead them in anywhere over here, but don't allow them to go out. So I'm not going to put any emphasis on that branch over there all that much. Mm -hmm. You always lead left to right with the eye? Always. It could be upper left, mid left, or lower left. Okay. Um, and I'm, I would like to talk to an individual that leads from right to left and see Probably how they... Both. They view a painting. A Asian people who. Yep, Asians do. Yeah. I have a web design. They tell you to read like a Z. You can okay. look at a website like a Z. That's but interesting. they're still left to right. Yep. A lot of times as painters, we can use that circular kind of motion. One of the too. things I thought I remembered Sandy Nitty that I was talking about, that I'm pretty sure she studied with Shapiro. That she went. I'm sorry. That she studied with Shapiro. Um, what was her name? He, her name was Sandy Nitty. Sandy Nitty. N i t t i. That she, name rings a bell. She was married to. What was her husband's name? I don't know. I don't think I've heard this name. Um, one of the things I think that she said Shapiro said was all four corners of the of the image. Uh, the total image should be very different. Yes, mm -hmm. and they should be very, and all the all four corners should be very vague. Also, okay. you want them to be let in somewhere in the middle and allowed to go out. Uh, a certain area and then come back. You can do that with um, having a, a, a C composition because the eye will automatically close it. Um, you can have a circle composition. There's different ways that you can format it, but you have to be careful not to um, allow them to go 
in and out because you're losing the viewer. Did you start with a pencil sketch? Yes, I did. I quickly penciled it out with a 2B pencil. Um, I never use an H pencil uh, because it's too hard and it cuts through the fibers of the paper. Um, I've seen uh, watercolors use up to a 6B, 8B pencil. It's very soft and it just sort of dissipates into the water. But don't use a hard pencil. H stands for hard, B stands for soft. And do you ever do value studies? Um, I encourage my students to do them um, all the time. It's, it is a great planning tool. I do them occasionally. Um, I can't. I have to be honest, I don't do them all the time. And the students want to know why, and I give them the mm -hmm. same reason that my mother used to give us. Do as I say, don't, as I, don't do as I do. Um, I do them occasionally to plan out large compositions and so forth. But I don't do them all the time because I have to kind of go on the experience that I've had for the last 40 years. Kind of a gut instinct as opposed to when you're 18 19 year olds you don't have a gut instinct even though that i've seen students say that they do but <laughs> what's that, that about right. <laughs> it has to do with the hippocampus they don't develop yeah it's it's just something with experience you gain the knowledge that you need to go right into the to the painting I feel like a dentist with all these tools in my hand. Mm -hmm. and that's why I like I like watercolor. You can stand there and just watch it come alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. just watch it. You know, seriously, I just love them. I just I love them. <laughs> well, I fell in water fell in love with watercolor after I started understanding what I was supposed to be doing. Uh huh. Yeah, me too. Uh, before that, I can <laughs> I honestly like, say no. I was getting quite disgusted with it. But um, once you understand what you're doing, it should be kind of second nature. Do you ever add ink on top of your watercolor? No. I don't uh, add anything other than watercolor. Now, if I'm using wash which I had mentioned to somebody uh, if I'm using it in small little areas I will use um, Windsor Newton white wash not Chinese white because white Chinese white is a chalky paint it cracks mm. and falls off um, oh. I use it in a very limited way uh, with the gouache very small areas I brought some with me today in case I wanted to use it mm -hmm. um, do you mix it with won't. your watercolors sometimes to get a little tint to it? Yeah, mm -hmm. you can you can work with white gouache mixing with the paint. Mm -hmm. You can use it opaque, mm -hmm. or you can use it translucently. You add more water to make it translucent. It's kind of like stained glass window where you can wash across things. Oh, is that how you did the smoky area in that? Um, the, no, I things? lifted that. Oh, okay. Um, I'll, I'll show you. You said Windsor Newton, not Chinese? Or did uh, because it has a lot of chalk in it. And what it, was the color that you used from Windsor Newton? I used the, um, the uh, usually the titanium or permanent white okay. Windsor Newton. No. Now, if I'm using it in large areas, I'll use acrylic paint, white acrylic, because it flexes with the weather sure, because your paper expands and contracts yeah interesting okay um 
Now, if it's a competition and it's transparent watercolor, you cannot you use it. Cannot use the watercolor. Can't yeah. use colors. Yeah. There's a artist that I know that did a he typed real tight watercolor painting, and he does beautiful work, but he's very very tight. He did it 100% transparent. He used a little gouache with color to sign his name. He was out, which I thought was wrong. Oh, just let you know we're on low battery for the Facebook Live. We're almost done. But there's, there's a lot of different things you can experiment with, but it's a matter of having the want to experiment with it. And what I did to learn more is I took all my old paintings that I felt were failures, and I experimented on them. I thought, I have nothing to lose. Let's see if I can go in and punish it. And I learned a lot how to fix things. Mm -hmm. So it's something of a learning curve that you can do. Did you over or did you lift? I just painted it right on it, and I said, what can I do with this? What can I do to improve it? Mm -hmm. uh, so I just continued doing it. And sometimes I would throw them away. And I didn't have anything to lose. That's the, that's the nice thing about it. Yes. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult. It's very absorbent, but I've had uh, some very good luck with it. I had a, um, a neighbor whose son made handmade papers out in the um, in Connecticut or Vermont, New Hampshire, and they really made some nice stuff. They made all sorts of... They wouldn't be archival, would they? Pardon? It wouldn't be archival. No. No. Now, there's a place in Brookstone, Indiana, that makes paper. And the paper was pretty good. Um, I like the, the feel of it, but I haven't. I ordered a sample packet, and I used it. And they're up the road near Lebanon, I think, or north of Lebanon. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah. But this is kind of fun. It's it's something of uh, a learning curve when you're doing outdoor painting because you're dealing with the weather. Yes. Um, yeah. I like to look at it as I like controlled circumstances better, to be truthful. Mm -hmm. But. Um, you if you're painting outside, it's, it, you have everything to contend yeah. with. So it's like if you're in a controlled circumstance, it's like going to see a movie. Yeah. They made all the cuts. They've got the perfect situation. But if you're painting outside, it's like going to see a play three nights in a row. It's different every night. Mm -hmm. So it, it's kind of along those lines. Can I go ahead and put, publish it because I'm afraid of... You go right on ahead. I'm going to finish this up here with a few things. Why don't you say what you're going to do and then I'll hit finish. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and add a few accents of darks in here. And that's it. Okay. Say goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for watching.